there we go. So we're going to start again for the, anyone who was watching the recording. I just turned it on, but you haven't missed anything <laughs> managing our group here. Um, <clears throat> I do want to go back, though, to this to this um, great slide, which is our real point here today is to learn how to move beyond learning, which we'll always be doing and we're, we're always doing every day, but into into our action. And again, a rundown of what we want to talk about a little bit about this wise out of Plymouth area action, because I love all the components it helps people see. And then we also have some great examples from Roseville, St. Louis Park, some of the things we're doing at the State League, and then really want to just open it up because many of you are doing lots of things and we want to learn from each other. So that's really what our lunch and learn is all about today. So the first piece here is, and I'm going to pull this down. I'm calling this anatomy of a racial justice action. And thank you. I think Rebecca Hawthorne's on and um, really uh, thank the Wyzetta Plymouth area for letting me take their action and dissect it into parts to really kind of look at what a lot of times what stops us in moving forward is sort of how do we move forward? And the one of the things they've done gives a really great example. So we're going to walk through it. And it really, I think, starts out a lot with this first comment, which is be curious about what's happening in your community. Every community has different, um, different needs, different interests, different resources. And so in this case, a member of the Wyzetta Plymouth Area League was reading about this issue of properties being burdened by racially restricted covenants and really wondering, gosh, how, how do you move forward to dis to to discharge those covenants. So sometimes things just start out that way. Gosh, this is happening in our community. I read something in the paper. I heard something at a meeting. I know about something in our community that is a miss. So being curious, finding out, you know, what's going on with that. So the next step really was is this again, of reaching out to community partners. This league member then attended um, a meeting and really where restrictive covenants were being discussed and the state statute was brought up again. So again, we have this interest. We're like, who else has this interest? And reaching out to those partners. And then it's like, well, we need to learn a little bit more. What, what are these racial covenants anyway? What what are they about? They really took time to learn more about the extensive history of racial covenants in Minneapolis and surrounding communities. And so education is always still at the heart of what we're doing, but now they're kind of bringing in that curiosity and partnership with the learning. Oops, sorry. I'm come go back here. I will. There we go. Then comes the time of digging deeper. We get often get to this and go, well, now what do we do? <laughs> what do we do about this injustice that we found in our community? And that led to them finding the other program, in this case, Mapping Prejudice Program, to really look at, they have a wonderful interactive website about uh, mapping where racial covenants were. And from there, um, they started digging deeper and discovered their entire neighborhood, in this case, had racial covenants tied to his properties. So they went further and they looked for how can we now act on this? And they followed up with the Just Deeds Project, um, another great project in Golden Valley, which helps homeowners and cities to discharge the um, racial covenants. So again, following up, learning, now how are we going to take action on this? And a lot of the action we take is rarely alone. I, that's the real key message I think I want to deliver today is it's, if, is it's working in concert with other organizations and with other resources that are out there to solve problems. Again, don't act alone, engage diverse partners. After learning from these resources, they formed a partnership with the city of Wayzata and others groups listed here in order to educate the wider community on racially restricted covenants in their, in their history, which is a great another example. Gosh, we've learned this, we have a small group, but now we need, in order to take action, we need to engage the wider community. And that's the, really that next really key step of educating and in, involving that broader community. 
with their successful public education sessions then led to them reaching out to Wyzetta City Council members and requesting that the city of Wyzetta consider joining the Just Deeds Coalition. From there, they had a workshop and acted with purpose and had success. On October 5th, 2021, the Whitehead City Council unanimously adopted a resolution condemning the use of discriminatory covenants. Um, and I like this other part, which the council also announced that it's considered renaming a city park that currently holds the name of an early real estate developer who placed covenants on YZ properties. So that is a great success out of somebody's curiosity of what's going on in their community from reading the newspaper. But it goes one step further, and that is to keep going and building on your success. Um, LWVY said of Plymouth area members now hope to move forward with the city of Plymouth. And so as a whole, I think it is just, um, just a really great example of how action can can move forward and it moves forward in these steps and I think about it a little bit too as we talk today about um, I'm going to use I know some of my Brooklyn Park Osseo Maple Grove folks are on and maybe they'll hopefully chime in as well um, but we really built some great partnerships with regards to uh, redistricting that was a great place where we found some new partners and now they're engaging those partners to move forward with doing um, candidate forums and other activities so it's all about continuing to build those bridges so before we go on with this, I'm wondering, Rebecca, if you um, want to add any more to this story? I'm putting you on the spot, I'll say that. Th well, thanks, Michelle, for sharing it. I, I just, I want to make it, uh, I want to be realistic here. We have started our outreach to Plymouth and we're really knocking our head against the wall. So not every community is open. And the reality is that you need a different strategy for each community. So we're regrouping. And we'll continue to work with the city of Plymouth, but a totally different experience than walking through this process with the city of Wyzetta. Very interesting. And a good, another good point, right, too, right? It's, we make it look really easy in hindsight, right, Rebecca? But I'm sure along the way, this had a lot of like, well, now what are we going to do? Or how are we going to? Um, so I think that is you know, again, just that notion of continuing to persist and move forward. Rebecca, are you feeling too like some of the partnerships you've made are are giving you opportunities to work on other things together? Absolutely. The city of Wayzata has involved the league right now in some Native American heritage work. We are going to be putting up a plaque on the shores of Lake Minnetonka for the first time acknowledging the Native heritage of the area. And the city contacted us to help them plan some educational sessions, reach out into the community, um, plan the dedication ceremony, again, with the same group of community partners that we pulled together on the racially restrictive covenants. So there are more opportunities that are opening up to work together. Awesome, very good. Um, because I am very restricted in what I see, if anyone has questions, if you could put them in the chat box, that would be great because I can only see about five of you on my screen. So. Thank you, great, really appreciate that. Um, all right, I'm gonna run through a few more and then we'll really kind of open it up to more discussion here. But um, <clears throat> a lot of it too um, comes from just those local resources that you have. And LWV Roseville shared some of their success. They did a two-part program entitled Real Life Mr. Rogers. And we focused these in our, um, in our November all member news, we put links to, uh, to a lot of these programs, but they had speakers from the greater community to help be welcoming to all members. And what's really fun is they talked about longtime residents may be anxious about what they might say or do, or that they might do the wrong thing. So they had this great panel um, to help people have practical strategies to begin welcoming neighbors and building strong and diverse neighborhoods. And what I love is that the relationship that they have with their library. I mean, many of you have relationships with your library, but Ramsey County's is especially strong. If you go on Ramsey County's library um, site, you'll see links to these um, videos that they did. And these are great 
partners. Libraries are great partners, our cable stations when we're doing this DEI programming. Um, is there anyone from Roseville area that wanted to speak more to this project? If you're out there, just unmic yourself and chat. Um, this yeah. is, is, is somebody else here? I can't see myself. Go for it. Okay. Um, it, it was this idea, it took a long time to develop and it, it sort of went many different directions before we finally settled on the panels that we had. It was um, harder to put, pull together than we'd anticipated. Um, but trying, and, the, and then we ran into uh, a problem that one of our panelists is a school board member and, and uh, it's like, uh-oh, there's school board elections. <laughs> so, oh, wow. so we had to go through all the, through the steps, which we appreciate there are steps now on the state website about what to do when you have um, a candidate appearing in a non-candidate type event, that you've got guidelines for that now on the, web, on the state web. Um, but it, it's really, it's a difficult balance to find. Some people will say this is too basic and other people will say, are you, are you sure about that? You know, do I really have, and it's, so it, it's a difficult balance, but uh, we're glad it worked out well in the end. Great, thank you. I mean, I love the words we're hearing, you know, this is not easy. We had to go in several different directions. You know, we had problems along the way. Those are really part of all the things we do, right? But nonetheless, they persisted and have these, we have these fun results to look at. Um, here's another one um, in thinking outside the box again about possible partnerships, in this case, St. Louis Park. Um, and this all started with just with Shelly Colvin talking with her local league about um, educating children about racism and and out came this idea about childcare facilities. Like, gee, do in-home providers or centers have appropriate materials to be able to educate um, their kids on racism? And so from that came <clears throat> um, the idea to put together a set of books that they could use for curriculum. And they're put in a little League of Women Voters bag. So there's little visibility there too for us, but then that is provided by the librarian. They can check, centers can check those out by the librarian, which I think is also great because it's not just giving away the books and then we have uh, hundreds of books, but they're actually part of the library process to check out and have discussions about social justice and anti-racism. And specifically the set of books focus on facilitating conversations about similarity, similarities and differences with an emphasis on skin color and kindness, confidence and empathy. And these were the, the book titles that they included and they also uh, did a really great thing, which is a survey of St. Louis Park daycare centers and in-home providers to gauge interest in the project. A lot of times when we're thinking about things, they might seem like a good idea to us, but are the people we're serving, do they have those same ideas? Um, and they did, and they had at least 10 childcare facilities interested in participating. So I thought this was another just great, um, tangible project that also continues to live on as as the books continue to be shared um, with daycare centers. Is there anyone from St. Louis Park or what wants to talk more about this project? Go ahead, Shelley. Um, one of the things that we learned um, when we well, we started with a presentation, um, me <laughs> and another league member, Emily Wacker. Um, and one of the things Emily and I learned um, were the, and it, it, it's something we kind of knew intuitively, um, but it was written by um, experts that kids, even up, up to the age of three you know, a five and whatever age are absorbing the culture around them and that what they see, what they hear, what they is, a, is taken as the world around them, they're enculturated. And we think, well, do you talk about kids and even up through high school, at, at age appropriate? Um, does it, is this something you know, that we should, should bring up and whatnot? Well, then we looked at these little kids, is this, 
is this, oh my goodness, um, do we say all this, do they, do they know? Well, they observe, they can see, they know what's around them. Um, and so that's what got us going. And then beyond that education, it became um, an action item, an action way that we brought that knowledge to action that seemed um, uh, kind of logical. And then the library, um, they got excited. Um, and so that's kind of the, how it how it came about, and and we have found that it, it was it's just a, a really great way um, that our league has founded found to, in St. Louis Park um, to do a little action. Great, thank you so much, um, Barb. Memory, you wanted to add something here. How were the books uh, funded? The library. Um, I, you know, I don't have the material. I then stepped out of the committee because I was doing other work and let Emily um, go ahead with that. And I can come back with for anyone who wants specific ideas. I mean, specific uh, facts around it. Um, I'm pretty sure that the library did purchase them and they, um, that they will become part of the uh, library collection um, later. Uh, we did have some um, some money to put into this project, and I'm not I'm I can't answer for sure um, without the without the notes in front of me. Good question, though, Barb. Well, I'll answer that question too. Oh, you might know because they yes. sent you materials. They sent yeah, you so stuff. So essentially, um, yeah, your group came to the State League and asked if we would um, be willing to contribute toward that. And that is sort of um, uh, is, is stealing my thunder a bit, which we'll talk about at the very end. But um, we did provide $250 to the League to buy those books. And um, what we're looking at is offering the same kind of thing to other local leagues as sort of a challenge. We're doing this with climate change, our climate change challenge, and maybe also with racial justice, where if leagues have some funding needs, in this case, it was really nice because the books, it's not like they're given away and they're done. They, they stay around. And so that a, a, was a really easy um, way we felt we could support that project. So, so we don't have an official grant program for this yet, but we're always happy to help if there's some way and we're looking to see if we could formalize that a little bit. Thanks, uh, Michelle. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not just quite, uh, quite um, with my everything, but no, that's very, very important. Yeah. And we, we made good use of that. Um, great. And I see we have two more hands up, although I will confess I can't see them on my screen because I can only see my chat. Let me look in my participants list here. So many screens. Let me see who else has their hand up and if I can call on you. Um, I don't see anyone else right now. So if I'm missing you, I'll try to look at that screen too, um, but put it in the chat. Amy Cowcutt asked, did the library choose the books or did LWV choose the books? So who chose the books, Shelley, for the project? I think it was conversation. We had a list, a uh, quite extensive list, and it was in conversation with the library because um, as librarians, they know what has um, uh, been checked out and popular and um, they're very knowledgeable about a lot of topics and, <clears throat> and whatnot and we also then had had lists that we thought were good yeah all right so next I wanted to talk about just a few things we at the state level have been doing too and um, <clears throat> as sort of just extensions of things happening and I you know there. A lot of times I think what <clears throat> the point we're making here too is things seem small, but as a whole, if we all work together, these things really add up. One is we're trying to look at doing our business with more black and ethnic owned businesses. So an example would be, we send a lot of flowers out to league members, um, to people who have died or spouses who have died and uh, things, you know, people that we think deserve a good friendly, 
set of bouquets. So we really looked and found um, <clears throat> a supplier. This is a, a black owned business, Bouquets by Carolyn. So now we're ordering all of our bouquets from there. So that was a, again, a simple step, but um, it, it also raises that awareness for us all the time to look at, you know, is there a way we can think about who we're doing business with? Um, a lot of you have, have noticed we really continue to deepen our relationship with Sweet Potato Comfort Pie, which is run by a league member in Golden Valley, Rose McGee. And we participated in their first Juneteenth Jubilee last summer. And we've done several things with them, including participating in their Martin Luther King Day of Action this last week. Um, this is just a lovely partnership for us um, because it includes a lot of league members and really is about um, healing uh, racial justice and acknowledging youth and others in our community. So it's really been a, a rewarding uh, partnership for us, but I think for them as well, in terms of our ability to bring what we have to the table. Um, CARE Minnesota, the Council of American Islamic Relations, we started with a lawsuit with them, not against them, but with them when we were um, going against the Atlas Aegis um, group that wanted to send um, people to guard our polls last year. But that relationship continues to deepen. Again, we had one action and a lot of times we find we do something with the group and then we just kind of we kind of let it go because we move on to the next thing. So we've really been working with CARE Minnesota um, I've been working with their executive director. We've done some talking together. We've doing work on redistricting together. So that is a, a continuing to be a meaningful ongoing partnership. Also, when looking at our community, there was, if you might remember in Frogtown, where our office is, the Hmong Cultural Center, um, which recently opened, was the victim of really bad vandalism. And so actually both Shelley and Barb Memory went to visit our, our neighbors, um, the Hmong Cultural Center. And, and Barb Memory, could you chat a little bit about that visit and what you learned and what we hope to do next with them? Sure. Uh, Shelley got it all set mm -hmm. up and we uh, met at the state uh, league office and drove over together and met with the uh, ex the director uh, of the Hmong Center. He gave us a little tour of the ground level uh, exhibits and he described the classes that they offer throughout the week, uh, multiple classes for uh, Hmong residents of the general area, and it focuses on uh, learning English and uh, developing an awareness of the culture here, and it also provides uh, support for the people who attend. So in discussing, um, Shelly and I uh, described a little bit about how we are uh, very uh, interested in helping people register to vote and to learn how to vote uh, based on um, accurate information and um, that we are also involved in naturalization uh, ceremonies, all of both of which we thought would be of interest uh, to his uh, mission. And he uh, right away uh, said, we would love to have a league uh, person come in periodically to our classes to do hands-on uh, registering to vote, answering questions, and so on. Their uh, attendees very often don't uh, speak English very much. So uh, our uh, taking time and being uh, available for, for questions and to understand what they're asking, I think would be really important. Um, as far as what we're gonna do next, uh, I'm gonna ask Shelly, cause I really don't know. Well, and I can jump in there too, cause we're, Shelly and I will be following up for sure. Just like you said, Barb, thank you for that report that will be um, working with them to do some more education and voter registration or information about new citizenship. And so that is exciting. And I think it's another one of those things where we just saw a need in our community. They had, you know, we, we put a, we did put on social media, we, we expressed our support, you know, against the vandalism that happened, went to visit them and now have this relationship. So a lot of these 
actions start from that simple involvement with something we see in our community. And last is the Indigenous Land Acknowledgement. Um, Shelley has put together a task force and the task force had their first meeting. We are looking at uh, creating a draft Indigenous Land Acknowledgement that we can use as the state league to um, always be um, using and thoughtful about as we start events like we did today, um, and as well as providing a template for local leagues to adapt some of these to adapt the acknowledgements to fit their own local area so that is another um, action for us that we're working on right now at the state level um, all right so moving along because i want to get to you all a little bit more um, another thing we're doing, um, you might have heard again about our voting, Violet, <laughs> but we're excited about this plan for go to voter engagement, which is really part of our DEI lens in the hope that by having um, this sort of wonderful ethnic animal that we can go out and have fun. Um, we've talked about mascots and uh, approachability and sometimes you know, animals provide a way and mascots provide a way of breaking down barriers. And so we really want to have this sort of neutral symbol to engage a more diverse audience, both in ethnicity, but also gender and age as a way to get kids to and youth to be excited about it. So we are working on getting our mascot um, designed right now and to be able to, one of our interns will be working on locations we could be at so that we could have have a wider presence for voter engagement across um, the state this year. So other ideas, then we're going to hear from you. And I, um, I wanted to throw this out there too. Partnerships for candidate forums and voter engagement events are just, there's so many great opportunities. This is um, one recently, I know that, um, again, in our Brooklyn Park, uh, maybe Maple, Grove and Osseo, they are working really hard on building a lot of these partnerships, but it did this reminded me of how many um, local media we have around that are ethnically based Hmong, um, we, right here, you have sort of the Somali TV Minnesota, we have among TV Twin Cities. So again, another way, when we think about um, our candidate forums, we go to our traditional cable stations, which is great, but we can also maybe look for other media partners, um, more ethnic media partners, different cultures, different groups. Um, and when we're doing voter engagement, voter registration to like always say to ourselves, gee, who could we pick up to go with us um, as a great idea? Um, okay. And um, just before we move on, I want to just some of the questions in the chat. Um, and oops, sorry, my little, my little cursor is going all over as I try to move my chat here. Um, but there is some good chat about um, also some of the issues around um, racial covenants within rural areas. So you can kind of read that. The chat and the slides will all be available to you as well as the recording, just so you know that. Um, so we'll have a chance to um, read some of those comments and get those links after, after the, um, the webinar today. All right, so what we want to do now is I want to, I'm going to sh um, turn off my screen here in a minute and for us to learn from others about projects they're doing, other ideas we have, what can you share with us. I did put the do something.org on there. I really love do something.org. They're great. Um, where people put all kinds of ideas, like what are you doing? They have things not just on racial justice, but climate justice and democracy, and just what are normal everyday people doing to be active on these issues. So that's kind of another fun resource for you. All right, so now I wanna stop sharing and now I can see you and I can see if hands are raised. So I would love to hear from some of the other groups. Um, I wanted to start, there's a few people I asked to provide some comment today. And one is Colleen Feige from Edina because you also have had a real robust um, kind of program and results. And if you could start us off with our local league sharing, Colleen. 
Thank you, Michelle. And um, I think I'm unmuted. Okay. Yep. Um, yes. In uh, the summer of 2020, our league uh, established a goal to uh, work to advocate and participate in local action to eradicate discrimination and systemic racism. Obviously, that is a very long term goal. But part of doing that, we established a racial justice action committee, which has been very active and it has three subcommittees. Uh, they are LWV and race, and that's past, present and future. Voting rights is a racial justice issue. And the third one is learning and unlearning, the history of whiteness and racism. Uh, then in February of 2021, the league approved us doing a study on racial diversity, equity and inclusion of 50 social institutions in Edina. Uh, and we'd hope to have that completed by uh, the annual meeting this year, 2022, but that's a really big job, especially with COVID and so forth being present. So that's actually gonna uh, come to fruition probably within the next year. Um, but as we've moved along with this, I think there's some things that we have learned. Uh, we, have get, we, have gathered, we have garnered more members who are interested in racial justice. Uh, and the fact that we say voting rights is a racial justice issue has definitely increased increase the interest in that. Um, also, we have had some new partnerships develop as both Rebecca and um, um, Shelley said that uh, there are some new partnerships that we have found. One is with the Edina Community Foundation. And actually tomorrow night, we are having a book review of this book. Um, I don't know if you can stamped. And uh, it's uh, we're doing that with anybody in the community that wants to join. And uh, this book was purchased by the Edina Community Foundation and put in our high school and middle school libraries so that students could check it out. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes, but that's one of the things the Racial Justice Action Committee is working on. Um, and we also have developed some partnerships with an anti-racism collective in Edina. So some different things that we're doing uh, moving along with that. And one other thing that I think is really significant, we have had a lot of press in the local paper about these various activities, various events that we're doing and also things that we're interested in. And I think that's been a real that's probably brought more members to us. It's also brought more people to the events and so forth. So, um, and one other example, um, we have an outreach coordinator, uh, an outreach chair. We've had that person in place for a while. And uh, what we do there is try to learn, help these various communities that are kind of underrepresented in our membership, uh, learn more about the league and voting and racial justice. And next week, I've been invited to, the, to a meeting of the Board of India Association of Minnesota to talk with them about how we can help them with voter education and voter registration and so on and so forth. So those, that's one of those partnership things. And um, I think it's really important to involve the community as Rebecca had emphasized a lot, the whole community working on these things because it's going to take more than a village to get all of these things accomplished. So thank you. Thanks so much, Colleen. I'm wondering too, if there's anyone from St. Cloud with us. St. Cloud just did a recent uh, program on critical race theory, which was br very brave on them given the, the, the challenges of that issue, right? Um, is anyone from St. Cloud on? I'm putting them on the spot. I didn't look ahead, but but I think the point is there's just a lot of great action going on. So I'd love for um, anybody else to share. Does anyone have some things happening in their league that they would like to share? If you wanna raise your hand, <clears throat> I can see that. Um, or have any additional questions <clears throat> about how people are going about this work. So one of the other <clears throat> resources, Barb Memory. Barb has one. Yeah, go ahead, Barb. Oh, you're on mute, Barb. 
Thanks. I wanted to share what the White Bear Lake area <laughs> League is doing. Uh, let me ask, is Jackie Reese on this call? Jackie, yes, are you here? Yes, I am. I'm right next to you on my oh, Hi. <laughs> well, Jackie uh, was one of the original founders of Many Faces of White Bear Lake area, and it was an outgrowth of her amazing community work with the White Bear Lake Community Foundation. And I believe it all started in 2017. And what it is now is a coalition of, I think, 15, something like that, uh, area organizations, which span the um, city of White Bear Lake, Century College, the public schools, family services, about four different churches, the Chamber of Commerce, Center for the Arts, Historical Society, Food Shelf, Rotary Club, and the Y. And with those component partners, um, my, my church joined and my league joined. And Jackie was really uh, the mover and shaker that that got it, got it to us. So as of... Um, 2018, there have been numerous events sponsored by uh, many faces, but also all of those component organizations. And some of them are depolarizing conversations about race, breaking the silence on race, how to talk with your children about race, celebrating Minnesotan African-American communities, uh, community conversations about race, um, empowering immigrants and refugees, um, Hmong 101 communities and culture. I could go on. There's implicit bias, Native American storytelling, and so on. So it is a, Many Faces a, is a great organization with the purpose of honoring the richness and diversity of our area and strengthening uh, through these events. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention, or Jackie, did you have anything about many faces? Okay. No, that was great, Barb. Good summary. Thanks. There's 20 organizations, 20 organizations now. 20 organizations. And these people uh, represent so many more people. I mean, the uh, designated uh, representative is a very high level person in these various organizations, but they pull in their employees and other, other families. So it's quite Good. The second thing I wanted to mention was that um, the um, Ramsey County Election Board gave a grant to our league uh, that was for our youth engagement. And so I think there were four or five, and Jackie was one of the mentors in that situation. Uh, Jackie, do you want to describe what the youth engagement program was and how it was impacted by uh, students uh, reflecting diversity? Right. Thanks, Barb. Yeah, it's it's somewhat similar to the Schumer Grant program, except it was um, earlier this year. We had um, students from Century College and students from White Bear High School. Um, everybody involved was a student of color. And they made, they produced was it seven different short videos um, in their own words of why it's important to vote, how to learn about voting, um, and we had a program where each of those, uh, where, where the students came in, the film, filmmaker came in, he was a Century College student. Um, and we had a great discussion with all of the students and the filmmaker who were involved. And I think it was very valuable to them because they all learned something also. It was a great project. And, and there were also, am I, am I talking? Uh, there were also presentations within the high schools by the students who were involved in this, so that their goal uh, was to increase awareness about how to vote, uh, not just for students of color, but the fact that they used their own frame of reference uh, and gave impact to it. Great. Thank you so much. I love how, again, it's, <clears throat> I really hope to, and I wanna put a shout out to all of you to share some of these results with the state league. So we can, it would be great to continue to um, sort of annotate these on our website. And I, I did wanna show you um, one other um, 
thing here you have on our screen under member resources, you know, I all, those of you who attend anything I do know I'm always bringing you to member resources because we do have so much here. But we do have under our league admin session, our diversity, equity, and inclusion. And here is where we list, um, we link to LWVUS resources and including two of the PowerPoints that were done at the LWVUS Council. I'm not gonna click on all those now, but they're all here. If you want more practical, good information on DEI, those are linked here. But then our LWVMN resources page, which Shelley has worked tirelessly on, this is where I would love to add examples. Um, like we did the write-up from White's out of Plymouth area Area. If we had just little paragraphs about your success that you're willing to share, I think that's really great. On this website now, we have books that to read. Again, book studies are always popular and we're always learning. Um, there are also great um, uh, things you can watch and build a program around. Any one of these videos could be a program with discussion for any of your local leagues. And then a lot of definitions um, that Shelley started about that relate to DEI. If any of you have ideas and suggestions for how we can add to this um, website, how we can put additional resources, we'd love to love to have that. And I know one of the pieces in our chat was, you know, talking about, for example, when um, changing the racial covenants and changing laws doesn't always change hearts and minds. And we know that, but it certainly is a step. And, and I think what what really has struck me is that we often think of the outcome, like you could look in the YZ Plymouth example, was what the YZ City Council did. But I think that the true enduring outcome are the partnerships of people working together in their community on a common issue. And that really is to me the destination, right? In this work is how do we continue to do our work, whatever work it is, with people that look different than us. If we all look like us, we're probably not reaching out enough. We want to reach out and be able to do more together. Um, Barb, you had a question. Uh, Barb Madison. Memory. Mm -hmm. oh. Anderson or Memory? Barb Memory, sorry. Yeah. No, I think it's Barb Anderson. Oh, Barb Anderson maybe. Okay, Barb, did you have a question? wasn't a question it was I wanted to share with you that um, last year the Roseville Area League conducted a study of our five member cities on equitable representation on commissions and um, mostly it consisted of a survey of current at the time um, members of the various city commissions and there was one city that had no commissions, but there's another one that has like 10. And so um, questions about not just their ethnicity, but their age range and, and um, um, household income. And so we put the information together, not so much with recommendations, but just with information and made presentations to each city about the results of the findings. And they were very interested and receptive. And then um, just this month, we have uh, annually something we call conversations with constituents where we bring together elected officials. And this time we brought together the mayors of uh, the five cities and um, asked them to focus on the equitable representation. And so the conversations they had um, with each other, as well as with our members about um, the, what the makeup of their, their um, commissions and different things that some have done and some haven't done, but had thought about. And just, it was a really productive um, session. And I think we'll, there'll be a lot more conversations in the future about it. Great. 
Thanks, Barb. Um, it reminds me too that um, I know that, um, and Shelly, you might be able to provide comment on this, that the Crystal New Hope um, East Plymouth Robbinsdale area group has also um, started sort of a regular meeting of people involved in DEI work. And actually one of the things that league also did was letters to the editor, uh, submitted a letter to the editor about one of the council uh, people in their area who kept referring to COVID as the Wuhan flu. And so, but they did a great job of crafting, crafting um, a, uh, a really nice letter to the editor. They, they submitted it to us for some review and help and we worked together and, you know, they um, also submitted it to their council members to say, you know, hey, we object to this language and asking them to clean it up. And so those, those, those kind of paying attention to those types of how that dialogue is playing out is, is really great. Um, Shelly, the group that's meeting regularly, is that something people can participate in? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, yes, we encourage participation. And I say we only, um, it's, it's Michelle Jane, Michelle um, Jane. Mm -hmm. from, the, from the, uh, their league. Um, she is the organization, she's membership chair. The facilitator is Sheila Webb, who is head of their DEI programs. Sheila Webb is a very... As, as everyone is, but very interesting woman. Um, she's on the Robbinsdale City Council. Um, so she brings, and she's also a, a social worker at, um, at one of the um, schools. Um, and um, she just brings a wealth of, of information to her and a good facilitation. Now, Susan, you've come to that meeting. Um, Carol, you've come. It meets the first, and I probably missed, I don't know, no, everybody was on the call, but it meets the third when, uh, Monday of every, um, of every month um, to get the link. It's on our events calendar, isn't it? Yeah, um, I do believe it is. Third, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that's how you can get the link. Mm -hmm. Also, I... Um, yeah, I think that's probably the the best the best way to get the link. Um, yeah, they want they want as many leagues. Um, they, they want a rich conversation. It is a um, oh, I want to use the right word. Um, it's a casual conversation. It's not scripted. Um, the who shows. Um, has questions, have you found a resource for this? Oh, my lead did and they're doing this. Um, it's, it, it's, uh, it's great. I've, um, I can ask Susan um, or uh, Carol or Barb Memory, I think you've come. Um, others probably have to, I, um, if, if anybody wants to add anything about that, but I, I attend most of the meetings and I found them just um, just very, very uh, good, helpful, um, very supportive. Yeah, Susan, you were gonna add Susan Clark? Well, I'm just, I, I, I think it's a very helpful group because it's a, it's a bunch of people interested in racial justice. Some of them have committees in their own leagues and such, and it's a good sharing of ideas. Yeah, wonderful. Um, I'm just looking a little bit as we kind of wrap up with some of the questions and some people in the chat are talking about pushback. How do we deal with pushback? Of course, some of these, the changes and things we wanna do are met with controversy. They are not easily done. Um, and that is um, certainly gonna be part of the game. And <clears throat> um, I know Mary Jones, your question too of how do we deal with people is it, our most effective response in person, online, otherwise when people are adversarial. We've certainly seen it in communities a lot around when we had our critical race theory and the issue of masks around school board issues. So there will always be controversy, right? I think in that and, <clears throat> and what is um, great though is I think 
where the league continues to be valued is having another point of view. And it doesn't have to be an angry point of view always, but it is a factual point of view. And keeping those lines of communication open um, and refuting things that are seen and heard, um, like they did in Crystal New Hope when the council person kept referring to Wuhan flu. Uh, sorry, that isn't, you know, this is what what that can mean and do, let's have this dialogue, this conversation, it's all, those are great examples of sometimes we're looking at the big thing, right? Like, you know, we're certainly working on the big issues around racial justice, which are voting rights and restoring the vote and other issues that are very big that we'll continue to work on. But there are those things that really do help promote conversation and hopefully change hearts and minds as well at the local level that all of these um, that all of these things you've talked about today are doing. So yeah, Shelley. Um, just on the issue of CRT, um, our national president, um, Deborah Turner, in the guidance on their um, website, and their website is sometimes very hard to find specific, at least me, maybe it's very, others find it e easy to navigate, but uh, on how to talk about that. And in a set, one, one way is um, not that C, the, the CRT seems to be a trigger, just like racist is a trigger. And some of these words cause people um, uh, to become defensive or whatever. And she has some alternative language for CRT to, when you talk about it. And it is a guy under guidance. Um, and I can post that, Shelly, on our, our DEI yeah. page. Mm -hmm. That's good. That would be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Um, any other questions before we wrap up? We, um, you will be getting a survey. Uh, we did our August Academy last August. Now we have our January Jumpstart. And we used a lot of the feedback to make some helpful changes in this year. So please do respond to the survey when you get it. Let us know how we can continue to best serve you. You will also get a link, all the links to all the recordings and all the PowerPoints will be available um, uh, within the next week or so as well so that if there's people in your league that want to refer back to any of this information, it will be there for you. So thank you, uh, Marty or Kathy. I didn't see your, you have a couple of quick questions as we um, Just a couple out. of yeah. quick comments. Um, every city has a, a, a human rights commission, I think, almost everyone. They're a natural ally. We have done a lot with our human rights commission for years with joint programs, um, even on the voting rights for those who had been convicted of felonies. And another thing, I have learned some new things from Kathy Tom, thank you, Kathy. But also we could go back and forth on that because there's also so many black homesteaders as well. Um, and uh, yes, and um, I was gonna just comment on Brooklyn Park, Osseo Maple Grove. They've been doing a lot of joint programs with the Think Again Brooklyn's, which have been really fascinating and very um, culturally diverse. Thank you. Yes, I'm very proud of my Carol and Carol Lee on here. They've just, you guys have been, it's a great example of stick to of, of learning those groups and then following up with them, which is real exciting. Uh, Kathy, do you have your hand up? Is anything else before we go? Um, just a second. Um, yeah, um, I just wanted to, to say that I was on the Waconia School Board for 12 years. I just retired in December of 2020, and that's when all this masking stuff and CRT stuff was starting to blow up. And um, we found as board members, and I, I, my, um, my former colleagues can confirm this, that sometimes um, when people are start talking about CRT or whatever, sometimes the best response is to answer a question with a question. Um, just say, um, excuse me, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand exactly what you, I'm trying to understand you. What do you mean by that term? Because most of the time people have a misunderstanding of what it is. They don't, they don't know just 
sometimes they're not talking about what they think they're talking about. And so if you start responding right away, then you're talking about different things. So you're talking past each other. So, you know, just do your, 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 your normal things of answering questions with a question or mirroring what they're saying so that sometimes myths, what they want is just to be heard. Um, they don't as always expect you to solve every problem. They just want to be heard and be reassured that, no, you know, the type of things that you're afraid of, I don't think are going ever going to happen in our district, you know, stuff like that. So that's the kind of things, um, find out where they're coming from first, um, before you start responding to them. Then, you know, if they're just factually all over the place, then try and start doing the facts, but do it in a, you know, but still draw them out and find out where they're at, um, Oftentimes, a complaint or an attack is a question in another form. Very well said. Thank you, Kathy. All right. So continue to do great work. Continue to let us know. Um, Carol Barclay, did you want to say something quick as we go? I just wanted to say that I am proud to be a league member when I hear all of these plans because, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been in the league a long time. And it's great to see us relevant and out there on the topics of the day. Um, so long we were looked at as kind of, well, we have to study it forever and we never take action. And that is not what's happening. So thank you. I agree. And thank you all for doing this hard work. It makes a difference. And I uh, know we're here to help if you have any questions along the way. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.